Senator Murray. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to all of our witnesses for joining us here today. And of course, thank you to our staff for setting up the technology so we can hold this hearing safely. Better I want to get to the point bit. quickly, and I'm going to be blunt about it. The COVID-19 response in our country is still a disaster. 126,000 lives lost was once considered an estimate on the high end of the spectrum. But the year is just halfway over and it is now a grim reality. We have lost more Americans to COVID-19 than we lose to the flu each year, than we lost to the opioid crisis last year, and more lives than we've lost in every American war except the Civil War and World War II. And despite what President Trump claims, this pandemic is not fading, far from it. Several states are seeing rapid record-setting increases, and the country just saw its largest single day increase to date. And while this public health crisis rages across the country, we've seen a leadership crisis raging in the White House. As the president proves, time after time, he cares less about how this pandemic is impacting families and communities and more about how it makes him look. Just consider his appalling continued failure on testing. President Trump said anyone that wants a test can get a test. They still can't. He said testing was overrated. It is not. He said we prevailed on testing. We have not. Now he's saying we should be doing fewer tests and testing makes us look bad. Well, it clearly does not and we clearly need to be doing more. The most honest thing he has said about testing is that he doesn't take responsibility at all. And that is exactly the problem. It's why Congress actually took bipartisan action in the last COVID-19 response bill to require the Trump administration to submit a comprehensive national testing plan. And it's why I'm still pushing for this administration to include more details in that plan and take more steps to ramp up testing. Because we are still nowhere close to the testing and tracing capacity we need to safely reopen our country and ending support for federal testing sites while sitting on billions in testing funds Congress provided is not going to get us there. The ongoing struggle to get President Trump to take testing seriously should be a stark warning to Congress that when it comes to vaccines, we can't just leave this administration to its own devices. We have to hold it accountable. We know this pandemic will not end until we have a vaccine that is safe and effective that can be widely produced and equitably distributed and that is free and ac accessible to everyone, which is why we need a comprehensive national vaccine plan from the Trump administration as soon as possible. Given the testing plan, which Congress only received after forcing the administration's hand was too little, too late. We need to take the opportunity we have right now to get a vaccine plan much earlier and avoid the missteps we've seen with testing. So I hope Republicans will work with me in a bipartisan way once again to require this administration to put forward a plan. We need the Trump administration to show us how they will ensure a vaccine is safe and is effective. I'm as eager as anyone for a vaccine. But this isn't just about doing something fast. It is about doing it right. That's why we need to know the process for developing a vaccine is rigorous, it's inclusive, it's transparent, and it is science-driven. But in light of the hydroxychloroquine debacle and the removal of Dr. Bright from BARDA for questioning the administration's efforts to promote that unproven treatment, we cannot take for granted this process will be free of political influence. We have to demand serious oversight. In order to give the public full confidence that a vaccine is safe and effective, the administration needs to commit now to being fully transparent about the standards a vaccine will be expected to meet and releasing the clinical trial data that FDA uses to evaluate safety and effectiveness. We also need a plan detailing 
how to produce and distribute vaccines nationwide and make sure everyone can actually get them. We saw with testing how avoidable bottlenecks create damaging delays when the federal government refuses to step in and lead like it needs to do in a time of crisis. And unfortunately, we saw how existing health disparities are exacerbated without a plan to overcome them as even the incomplete data we currently have shows Black, Latino, and tribal communities have significantly less access to testing than white communities. This is an injustice that we must not repeat when it comes to vaccines. We also need a plan to guarantee vaccines are free so that cost is not a barrier for patients. And it's worth noting, we still need to act to make COVID-19 treatment available at no cost too. And the plan must address barriers like vaccine hesitancy and misinformation, especially one of the, when one of the most prominent sources of misinformation so far has been the President of the United States. While the discovery of an eventual vaccine may still be far off, these are issues we need the administration to answer now. So I hope Republicans will work with me to require the administration to submit a comprehensive vaccine plan and address many of the other urgent issues stemming from this pandemic. Our businesses, our workers, teachers, students, and families do not have what they need to safely return to work or school, period. Our medical system, doctors, nurses, frontline workers continue to face unimaginable risk, stress, and fatigue. They need Congress to step up to help them continue to save lives. And families need us to continue to ensure they have basic services and can keep food on their tables. The House passed the HEROES Act 46 days ago to get more relief to frontline workers, to families and businesses. It is well past time for Leader McConnell and Senate Republicans to sit down with fellow Democrats and get to work. There's no question our country is still in crisis. And every day the Senate fails to take action is a day we allow it to get worse. I also hope, Mr. Chairman, that we will be able to have another hearing on this crisis soon with administration officials whose testimony is long overdue, Secretary Azar, Secretary DeVos, and Secretary Scalia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I look forward to our witnesses um, today, t testimony, and the questions that we have for them. Thank you, Senator Murray. Our great senators. Hi, Chuck. He used to love me when I was a Democrat, you know. 